files have been lost or destroyed, but that leads to the DNA evidence that was in the news. Who's heard about that? So there, uh, so it's, so what happened is right here. So here's a picture of that shawl, by the way. It's a silk shawl, and a recent claim of DNA evidence on uh, the shawl taken from the crime scene of the victim, Catherine Eddowes. That was that double event. That was the second murder, Mitre Square. So in Mitre Square, and so claim, the claim is this, that, I'll kind of put this up here, and it was really 1988 what happened. Now, by the way, 1988, coincidentally, or not, is 100 year anniversary of the Ripper victim murders. And there was a show, an episode, uh, a very popular one on Jack the Ripper, and they looked at three suspects, and all the experts picked this guy named Kuzminski. And surprise, surprise, this shawl comes into being. And in this case, what happened is, here's the story, that uh, when Catherine Eddowes was murdered, that the scout yard uh, police constable at the time, Amos Simpson, was the first on the scene and realized that this was going to be a famous murder scene because it was Jack the Ripper, stole the shawl. Uh, like this. And so kept it in the family, and then there was a family story about this. So is the uh, great great grandnephew, David Hayes, had this shawl. And what happened was he sold pieces of it to uh, a couple people for this special magazine. But then what he did in 1993, he donated to Scotland Yard's Black Museum. And so what happened was in 2007, this man named, this uh, wealthy person named Russell Edwards, bought that at auction for three million dollars. Three million pounds, so around three million dollars. Because he claims that Scotland Yard said that was, had the, the victims, or the murderer's blood, who we are convinced it was Kuzminski. So what he did was, 2014, he had a book come out. What he did is he had a geneticist, Lua Lannan, if his name's up there, uh, Jari Lua Lannan, test it. And so what happens is, what they claim was this. On the shawl, eight foot piece of shawl, there was uh, stains. There was a semen stain, so that clearly had to have been from the killer. And then a blood stain, so that could have been from Catherine Eddowes. And so they claim that they did is they did DNA testing of the descendants of the two, and it matched. Therefore, he's the killer. So, I mean, how would, you know, Kuzminski and the victim's, uh, you know, DNA be on the same shawl? Well, and the problem, though, was in 2014, it's mitochondrial DNA, and that's in the egg. So it follows the mother's 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 mother. And in that case, it could not have, uh, Kuzminski had no kids. So what they did was they used his sister Matilda. Matilda had a daughter's daughter. That person donated her to mitochondrial DNA. So, and then, uh, so, but then, uh, Catherine Eddowes daughter, uh, who was part of the story, but then daughter's daughter contributed her mitochondrial DNA. And what happened was in 2014 in his book claimed that the DNA marker from the daughter of Catherine Eddowes was this special marker three, one, uh, by the way, a marker is this. So when, uh, let's say the, the mother has a daughter, the egg is, uh, the mitochondrial DNA should be identical because it's, it's cloning. The problem is, is during the cloning process, there's going to be a couple mistakes, these mutations. Well, those mistakes are now part of the system for the rest, you know, as our kids. So we call those markers. So if two brothers had kids, you could tell which brother, uh, who, which brother had uh, this, this child was from by the Y chromosome because of these markers, and that's what they do. So they claim that this 314.1C mitochondrial marker was so unique, it's unique to the Eddowes family. Well, it was a ripperologist <laughs> that said, you made a typo. It's 315.1C. 98% of all Europeans had it. <laughs> <laughs> so, the big news in 2014, then it was silence until 2019. So Lil Lan said this. So, in two, peer-reviewed journal, Journal of Forensic Science, published it in 2019. So what happened was this. So we see this, and now I read this, and it was a peer-reviewed journal, a peer-reviewed article. No longer were they 100% convinced kind of thing. It said, this does not negate this, therefore it could very well be Kuzminski. That's kind of how they wrote it. And, uh, but 
it got into the national news that we have proven gen by DNA it's Jack the Ripper. Well, that's not what it says in the article anyway, but uh, Russell Edwards could give a crap. He spent three million bucks on this thing. <laughs> so how did it get in the news that fast when it just got published? So what happened was is the Ripperology world contacted Dr. Yuri King, Turi King, and she is the foremost expert in forensics genetics. First thing she thought was, why is Lowell Lannan doing this? Because he's not an expert. He's a genetic expert in uh, early childhood development. So why the heck are you even messing with this? This is forensics. There's a lot of different animals here. And then also, the peer-reviewed journal article, she goes, well, think about what peer-reviewed articles are for. And I participated in paleontology peer review. What happens is you're purposely putting your data there so peer experts can look at it and either duplicate your testing, look at your data to see if it's correct and see if your conclusions unavoidably match from your, your premises. That's what it is for. It's for peers, not for you. He hid the data from the experts in a peer-reviewed journal. So she's going, why the heck are you uh, hiding the experts? And then what you have is, before it gets into the peer-reviewed journal, you have three referees or three experts look at it to say, okay, go ahead and put it in this journal. She was one of the referees, and she said, don't put it in the journal. It still got in. So she's all shocked. So then she looks at it, and there's a couple things that happened was, now when uh, she, uh, as it says right here, uh, Dr. Terry King was the one that did the, the genome sequence on Richard, uh, King Richard, if, if you recall that. Mm -hmm. So she is the top, and then so what happened was, is, well, especially because they asked her to be a referee. They only asked the top people. So what happened was, is they were looking at the T1A1 mitochondrial DNA marker on the semen stain, so the Kuzminski side now. So Matilda... And they never mentioned that they used Matilda. <laughs> and they should have. Because, right. not that it's completely wrong. I mean, he should have the same one as Matilda, but they never mentioned that. So what happens is, uh, the, one of the things that they did was, is um, they took that marker and they looked at a database. Kind of like uh, Ancestry.com does to find out if you are. Now, Kuzminski was a Polish Jew. So Ashkenazi Jew. And they were in the Eastern Europe at the time, so that was the dia Jewish diaspora in the Eastern Europe. So they're claiming that it matched Ashkenazi Jew. Not that it's Kuzminski, but it still fits. So the same ripperologist that grabbed that found the database. It only matched one person, and the person was Gentile. <laughs> well, yeah, so Dr. Terry King says, well, that makes sense. And they go, so us guys that we don't know the genetics said, what do you mean? It makes sense. Well, when you do Ancestry.com, they don't say you're Polish or you're German. They say high frequency. There's a, your DNA is high frequency in this population, Celtic, whatever. But it's low frequency in Germanic, low frequency in Celtic, low frequency. And so in this case, even though that, that particular DNA marker is high frequency in Ashkenazi Jew, it's also low frequency in a whole bunch of other Europeans. So that particular person that contributed, you know, Kuzminski, it might, or the person that that stain was, not Kuzminski, but that stain, could be Russian, or it could be, uh, you know, Irish, I don't know, you know, Celtic or whatever. So, but then what she said was, and this was kind of a bigger surprise here, she goes, well, they did show some data, and there were two marker differences. So we said, okay, what's that, what does that mean? Well, when it's only two or three generations, there should really be zero marker differences on a small 100 strand. It was only about a 100 strand, letter strand uh, mark, uh, DNA, mitochondrial DNA. There should actually be no marker difference, at best one. There were two. She goes, that means it's a mismatch, not a match. And so she doesn't know what they're talking about. So that's the first thing. So the genetics is off on it. So, and then, the next thing was, is Amos Simpson should not have been at Mitre Square because Mitre Square is not the jurisdiction of Scotland Yard. It's the City of London Police Department. Two completely different jurisdictions, police departments. So most of the victims were murdered in, uh, in the jurisdiction of Metropolitan Police, which is Scotland Yard was the headquarters, except her. She was in Mitre Square. Amos Simpson actually was on a beat at the time, but a mile away. How did he get there? He wouldn't have been the first on the scene. 
And then to know what happened on the scene was that when uh, the police constable walked by Mitre Square, heard, saw nothing, minutes later went by and then saw it. And it was a fresh, fresh, everything was fresh. He screamed for the person, the neighbor, say, help me for God's sake. So immediately this guy told another person, ever since then, there were dozens of people always around that murder site. He would have had no chance of grabbing a shawl. So then, the other thing is, the blue indigo dye here is water soluble. If it's in the rain, it streaks. How many prostitutes that work on the street would have some <laughs> shawl that's made of silk that's water soluble? Right. So then they, they suggested, well, maybe it was Kazavitsky's. Why would a guy go, he's, his intention is to kill somebody, looks like to having your big long eight foot shawl on with your toe, I don't know. And then he took pieces of uh, Catherine Edo's, the ripped off some of the, uh, the uh, um, apron, and it was dropped off in Goulston Street, but that was clearly part of that uh, Catherine Edo's. So he used that to either hold the organs or wipe his knife or whatever he did, but he had the shawl. So it had, well, apparently it had some blood on it. So you could see that there's some problems with it. So, and then the other thing is this, Catherine Eddowes, this was at two o'clock that day, Catherine Eddowes sold her boyfriend's shoes to eat. What do you think if you had this expensive silk shawl on you, <laughs> you sell your boyfriend's shoes with his permission, because he was there. Let's get rid of the shawl first. You know, so you can see that there's so the providence of the shawl is completely wrong, mm -hmm. and the DNA is wrong. But that's not what the National News said. So that's why it's fun to them, uh, them ask questions. And so when you get into the research, you realize there's a few issues. Now, Kazminsky is a good suspect. There's some reasons why he could possibly be the person, but not this through this shawl thing. This shawl thing is just has too many uh, issues with it. So that's kind of interesting, isn't it?